Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss videos in the future. And if you like this video, don't hesitate to hit like and enter a comment down below. I try to answer all of your questions. Whenever you do a heads and cam upgrade, if you're not absolutely sure that the cam and cylinder heads work with the pistons that you have in the motor, you need to do a piston to valve clearance check. So I'm going to take you through that today on this little 5 liter. In order to prepare for it, I've installed the cam, a TrickFlow Stage 2, very similar to the Comp XE274HR. I've installed a couple of new lifters and the, uh, the little dog bones and the spider. Um, I've cleaned off the number one piston top. I've installed a factory head gasket, which is pre-compressed, new timing set, and I've got the cylinder heads, or head in this case, ready off camera. So we're gonna use Play-Doh here, put it on the piston top, install the cylinder head, install a rocker arm push rod, roll it over a few times, get an impression of the valves, and then we'll measure that at its thinnest point to determine whether we have enough clearance for this combination. You got these little eyes here, which are the valve reliefs, but when you put on heads with big valves, they could be outside those valve reliefs. So don't just put Play-Doh in the center here. You gotta make sure that you get it in this area here because this is the area where you're gonna get contact. And if something's gonna to touch, invariably it's gonna be the intake valve because it's a lot bigger. In this case, this motor is gonna get AFR 165 heads, which have 190 valves. One other thing to pay attention to is the gasket thickness. I did not have a pre-compressed set of the gaskets we're gonna use, which are the Felpro 1011-2. So I just have these stock gaskets. Now the stock head gaskets compress to 47 thou. I've double checked that with the caliper. These are compressed and they're 47 thou. Um, <clears throat> but the 1011-2 gaskets compress to 39 thou. So when you do all these checks, if you use a set of gaskets like this, which are not the gaskets that we're actually going to install, you need to uh, subtract the head gasket thickness difference from your, from your measurements. So for instance, if we get a piston to valve clearance of 100 thou on the intake using this method, then we're gonna have to subtract um, eight thou from that and say that our piston to valve clearance with the gaskets we're actually going to use is 92 thou. Now besides the piston to valve clearance check we also need to figure out how long of push rods we need for this combination so I have a comp checker push rod that we're going to use. I have new lifters and rather than use checker springs we're going to use the heads as they're assembled with the checker push rod and we're going to screw it down so that we've completely compressed the plungers in our new lifters. When we do that, we're gonna have measured the push rod about 50 thou too long. So we're gonna take that away from our measurement uh, when we determine the actual push rod length. Another Place the Play-Doh on the piston top, thick enough to be sure you get an impression. You could also place it over the valve on the head, but it may move or fall out during assembly if you do that. Using pre-compressed gaskets reduces the need for the head to really be torqued down to this step. Torque the head in two steps to 30 foot-pounds, just enough to secure it. We're trying to achieve a couple of things with this procedure today. The first is to determine the correct push rod length for this application. And the second is to make sure that we have sufficient piston to valve clearance so that when we run the motor, we don't have a piston to valve contact and a catastrophic failure. As far as the push rod's concerned, you're going to need a push rod checker like this, which is just an adjustable length push rod. And the way I like to do it is set that push rod checker to a length of push rod that I can get, test it, check the pattern and clearances. If it doesn't look right, 
set it to another length that I can get. Now you might wonder, why do I have this set to six, four, five, eight? Because <laughs> that's not a real common length. Well, the reason is because I'm adding, I've got this set for 6.4 inch push rod, but I've added eight thou back for the head gasket difference between the test head gasket and the head gasket I'm actually going to use. And I've added 50 thou back because the method we're going to use here is to use the assembled heads with the with the factory springs in them or with the AFR springs in them and then fully compress the plunger in the hydraulic lifter. So we've actually set the push rod about 50 thou longer because we're compressing that plunger fully for the test. I set up the rocker stud and guide plates off camera. The way we're going to set this up is we're going to drop the push rod in. Now, if you look here, what I'm going to do is drop the adjustable end in first. And that way, when we have this set up, we don't end up with the, uh, with the threaded part at the guide plate here, which might throw off our measurement. Next, we'll install a rocker arm. Now, make sure that you have the flat spot facing upward, because that's where the lock is going to go. We'll drop that down. We'll make sure that that's properly seated. And we'll take a look at our tips here. Make sure that that's properly centered. Then we'll go ahead and put the lock in place. We're just going to tighten that down like that. And then I'm going to see if I can show this to you. See if we can get a look in there. Hopefully you're going to be able to see that plunger. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this lock down and you'll see that plunger compress. See it going down? We'll tighten it until it just stops. Now we've got the lifter fully collapsed. And that's why we added an additional 50 thou to the push rod length because when we actually run the motor, we're not going to have it fully collapsed like that. Now, <clears throat> if you put a little bit of a Sharpie mark, just coat the top of the, the valve tip here in Sharpie before you assemble this. Then when you roll it over, you're going to get a, uh, you're going to get a pattern on there. And that's going to tell you how it looks. I've already done this, so I'm not redoing the Sharpie marks but you'll get the general idea here. You can use machinist die or just use a Sharpie. Mark the valve tip. Then when you turn this over, you'll get an indication of where the valve stem actually runs. So then you're going to roll the motor over. You roll this over a few times. You're going to watch it from the side here. And you're looking for it to have a, a contact on right on the center of the valve tip there, of the valve stem. And I'll finish off with it at top dead center. Then after we've rolled it a couple of times like that, <coughs> we can pull the rocker arm off, check our pattern. If everything looks good, we know we got the right push rod length. Then we'll proceed and do the exhaust. Once both of those are done, then we've rolled it over enough that we should have a uh, impression in our Play-Doh inside uh, the number one cylinder there. So we're going to pull the cylinder head off and uh, we'll see how we did. If you don't get an easily readable impression of the valves on your Play-Doh or clay, redo the piston to valve check until you're sure you're able to get a true read of the clearance. I did it three times on this engine until I was completely satisfied with the measurement. This is not a measurement you want to guess or be wondering about.
This picture shows the rocker arm to valve tip contact pattern with 6.4 inch push rods. It's a nice tight pattern centered on the valve tip and it doesn't get much better than this. Sometimes the play-doh or clay will stay with the piston. Sometimes it will stick in the head. In this case it's stuck in the combustion chamber of the head and I used an Olfa knife to carefully slice a cross section of the impression through the center of the valves. This makes it easy to see the thickness of the play-doh in relation to the valve and the valve relief on the piston. It looks like the 190 valve actually opens inside the piston valve relief and that gives us a likely clearance of 0.2345 or 0.2265 when the head gasket thickness is taken into account. I also measured the worst case clearance shown here at 0.1275 or 0.1195 considering the head gasket. I like to see an absolute minimum clearance of 80 thou on the intake, preferably 100 thou, so this is easily within a runnable range. The exhaust actually was tighter, but again, likely runs inside the factory valve reliefs. If it does, clearance was 0.183 or 0.175 taking the head gasket into account. Looking at a worst case scenario, the exhaust was 0.1275 or 0.1195 taking the head gasket into account. I like to see an absolute minimum exhaust clearance of 100 thou with a desired clearance of 120 thou and this is in that range. Sometimes this check will leave Play-Doh or clay trapped in the ports of the head. You may have to disassemble the two test valves to clean it up. If possible, don't open the valves to the extent that the lock grooves interfere with the seals to be sure you don't damage the seals. Just for laughs, I weighed a stock E7 head and a new AFR165 head. The stocker was 49 pounds and the AFR was 27 pounds. With 6.4 inch push rods selected and satisfied that the pistons are not going to touch the valves, we're good to order the push rods and start building up this engine. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell so that you won't miss out on future videos.